Hello traders and welcome back to Baby Peeps and today we're continuing from grade 10. Earlier we concluded grade 9 trading divergences and today grade 10 it's about market environment and here are the subtopics we have for today. Know your trading environment, know what is a trending market, what is a range bound market, trend retracement or reversal, how to identify reversals, protect yourself from reversals and so to begin as usual let's roll the intro so here we are at know your trading environment you know uh you have to know your trading environment like let's say uh, for instance, let's say you are a soldier, right, going to battle with, a, with your fellow uh, comrades, right? And you've been given the battlefield already, you know the destination where you're going to. So what would you do? Would you just, you know, start running into the field and shooting sporadically? No, you might be, you know, killed by a sniper gun or so. So uh, that's a foolish soldier, man. And that's the example they say here. However, they say a wise man, right, will stay with his team. Uh, he was to get situations report first. He was know the surrounding uh, conditions, surrounding the playground, and then he will know how to embark on uh, his campaign or his warfare. So, like warfare, we must also get a situation report on the trading environment. This means we need to know what kind of market environment we are actually in. Some traders cry say that trading system sucks, right? Why does it suck? Because they don't know their trading environment. So seasoned traders, you know, they try to figure out their trading environment, you know, before they bring out appropriate strategy to trade that market condition. Now, there are times whereby you have to bring out your Fibonacci retracement levels and your trend lines, you know, watch for candlestick pattern and all that they are suitable for different kind of uh, trading environment right so by knowing what kind of market environment we are trading in we can choose a trend based strategy and then if it, as if it's a trending market or a range bound trading strategy if we are in a ranging market okay so that's the, the difference if you are in a trending market use a trend trading strategy if you are in a ranging market a range bound market you use the range bound strategies you bring out the tools that can help you to be able to trade the range bound strategy okay so by knowing which strategies are appropriate for the market environment it will be easier for you to figure out what indicators to pull out of your forest trading toolbox for example, Fibonacci's retracement levels and trend lines are useful in trending markets, while pivot points supporting resistance levels are helpful when trending the, mar the ranging market, okay, when the market is ranging. So before spotting any opportunities, ask yourself, what is the market environment? Am I in a trending market? If it's a trending market, where is the trend? Is it trending up or down? If it is not trending up or down, but moving sideways, then that is a ranging market. And if you are in a ranging market, to trade a ranging market, what did we just learn? You bring in your pivot points, your support and resistance level to trade a ranging market. So let's move on to the next lesson to learn what is a trending market so here we are what is a trending market a trending market is generally market price condition whereby the price moves in one direction okay and to know this you have to look at the longer time frames uh, there will be moments of retracement okay but generally <clears throat> The price moves in one direction so look at the chart before us look at the trend line okay and see the price is moving in one, even though it's tracing coming up ultimately it is going down in the long run it will come up again ultimately to come down to come up again down 
and it's, this is just the movement of the price okay so in the long run if you look at it you see that price is really taking a down slope so this is a downward trend market okay so this is how we know we are in a trending market and in this scenario in this chart we're looking at it's a trend it's a downtrend market so if the trend is usually higher highs and higher lows right like this higher high higher low higher high higher low uptrend why if it is making lower low lower high lower low lower high lower low lower high it's what in a downtrend okay i hope you understand that how simple it is to understand now uh the trend the market you should you want to be trained uh, trading in this trending market yeah trending markets are actually filled with lots of liquidity okay and uh if the market is moving very very strongly know that there's a lot of volatility in that currency pair so the more movement a currency exhibits the more opportunities of finding strong uh trading opportunities and for price to move in that particular direction now to to determine the trending market there are indicators we can use one of them is the adx the adx helps us to know we use the ADS to determine strong trend. So either it is going up or it's going down. The ADS will help us to know if the trend is strong in a particular direction. So if it is above 25, that shows that the trend is strong. However, the ADS is a lagging indicator. It means that the action must have occurred before uh, the, the indicator pulls up. So it's lagging indicator. It lags behind price, current price action. And also the ADS is a non-directional indicator. Okay, it gives it it will report a positive figure whether the price is trending up or down. So look at this chart here. The price is trending down, but the ADS is reading above 25, right? It's somewhere between 30,000 look here you find it here 30,67777 so it's trending down but the indicate the ads is showing us that the price is you know is strong so it's a lagging indicator now another indicator you can use is the moving averages right moving average or you can call it MACD moving average convergence divergence now when you pull up the moving average uh, we are learning that you should put impute these figures 7 period, 20 period, and 65 MA. And how are we to read these indicators that we have just uh, caught up on the moving average convergence divergence? Here it is. Now, for an uptrend, the 7 SMA and the 20 MSMA will be to the top side. Now, if the 7 MSA, SMA rather, and uh, it's above the the 20 SMA and both of them are above the 65 uh, simple moving average just know that we are you are rather in a trending uptrending market that's how to use the SMA and those uh, figures now for a downtrend market is the reverse okay so look at the chart very well the blue line which is the 20, 65 SMA it is a, the 65 is just a longer moving average Okay, on the long term, some people use 200. Okay, but BB50 is saying use 65. So 65 is just giving us a longer period of time, right? The 20 is giving us closer, while the 7 is more closer, right? It's more faster. So 20 days moving averages, 7 days moving averages. That's what it means. Okay, so here it is on the reverse side. Okay, and we know once we call up these figures and we see the the in MAs compressed together like this right no you are in a downtrend market then another indicator you can use do you know that is the bollinger bands we know we use the bollinger bands in range bound market and help us to discover trend okay once it breaks out all the bollinger bands if you've forgotten these and how to use the bollinger bands go back to our previous course and i will link i put a link in the description where we talked about how to use bollinger bands now contrary to what you might think prices rally between prices really ranges between 70 to 80 percent of the time and uh, 
it is the norm for price to range uh, okay so 70 to 80 percent of the time price of the market is raging so it's only between 20 percent of the time that there's a trend okay so how do we trade uh, the trend using boligo bands pull up a boligo bands and we are told to <clears throat> the first boligo bands we are going to use uh, put a standard division of one and then pull up another boligo bands and set a standard division of two and then you will see price open the bands will open in the market like this you have boligo bands one and you have boligo bands two so how do you want to use the boligo bands for a sell or buy the trend market a trend market now if the price of the boligo bands one which is to the bottom okay if the price of the boligo bands one closes between the top in between the top and the bottom of the boligo bands okay no you are in a sell base i mean this, you can sell the market from this uh, level here because it has closed and uh, between in between the boligo bands now if you look at it technically also look at we have a lower low lower high and we have a new lower low here and we have lower high and we have a lower low again so using this structure based approach right you can know that yes you are actually in a sell bias market okay so once the price close in between this you know you are go to short the market that's the sell zone find it an entry and short and then we have the no man's land this is the area whereby we could i mean baby is teaching us we're learning is the no man's land and why is it the no man's land because that's where price is trying to find a direction price has been trying to find a direction and what do we have we have a range bound market up down up down in the same range it's just bouncing up and down up and down and if you want to trade a range bound market which is not advisable what you have to use or pull up is your uh, support and resistance level okay and uh, whichever way you want to use that whichever tool you want to use you can use okay and when it comes to the tide you sell when it comes to the bo bottom you buy in as much as you know it's ranging now how do we use the boligo bands to buy the market now once the price of the market has moved away from the no man's land you want to look for a buy how look at the very first indicator of the bullet bands you put you put up once price close between or in between the bands like this just know that the direction of the market has changed whereas more so this price moving from this area here gives us more confirmation and so you can look for an entry here 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 whatever see what happened prices rally to the top side so basically that's how you use the boligo bands to look for your entries okay i have just explained all that was written here sd1 and sd2 the most important thing is to drop two standard division of boligo bands i mean two boligo bands one puts standard division of one then the other division other, the other boligo bands put a standard division of two and then look in between the bands where price closes and take a shot if it's closing between this first band here in between these two moving average lines sell look for entry now if it has moved away from the no man's land look for consolidation as well right uh yeah range in market really look for the range and once it has broken above the highs of the range right you can look for sell because price has closed above the range and it has also closed in between the the new uh, the bulungo bands or number one so that is all for the bulungo bands and i think it's quick for us so next let's move to the range bound market the next lesson what is a range bound market so what is a range bound market it is a market in which price bounces between a specific high and low price the highs act as major resistance and it's difficult to break through and the lows act as major support and it's difficult to break through the lows as well so it is classified as horizontal ranging or sideways market so let's go faster so many people also call rich bound market choppy market or it's being choppy so it just means that there's no clear direction okay it shops around a specific area okay so how do we 
uh, trade the range power market you can use the adx in the ranging market and uh, if the market is said to be ranging when the adx is below 25 remember the market is said to be ranging when the adx is below 25 okay and that's what we said earlier on so and the adx also diminishes or the trend grows weaker once it's below 25 okay it's no longer trending and also you know, remember the A the ADS is a leading I mean it's a lagging indicator another indicator to use is the Bollinger Bands in the trending I mean in a ranging market okay and once you uh, once you, you pull up the Bollinger Bands in the ranging market what happens is that the price or the bands contract once the bands contract okay they don't expand this is expansion but in contraction it just comes like this so once the bands contract know that price is directionless it is not moving in any particular directions okay volatility is low however when the bands expand know that volatility volatility is increasing and there is more movement of price in one particular direction so generally when uh, the bands expand the contract you know what it now means okay the basic idea of a range bound strategy is that a currency pair has a high and low price that it normally trades between okay so let's say this is a high price and this is a low price what happens is that the currency comes like this up down up down no direction until finally it breaks off to the upside or it breaks to the downside and comes down continually like that so that's the idea behind the adx now to be profitable in trading uh, a range bound market you have to try sell near the high or buy near the low and the popular tools to use are channels okay popular channels are to use popular tools to use are channels such as the ones shown above in the bologo band then uh, using oscillators like stochastic rosi they increase your odds of finding a good um, entry and try to identify the potentially oversold and overbought regions this is a GU chart, GUPM and we'll have the stochastic, stochastic indicator called up this is the high of the range bound market okay and this is the low of the range bound market as well so we'll have three tabs one two three here we have four tabs one two three four so anywhere anywhere you buy here take your profit here you're good to go so that's how to use the range bound i mean how to trade the range bound market buying and selling we didn't talk about the uh indicator here the stochastic so look, look how it is bouncing as well and the uh, trading between that range price range now there are the best way to trade range bound market is to use is to trade currency crosses by currency crosses we mean that the currency pair does not have any usd in it so for example the euro chf eurozone european union and the uh swiss franc or switzerland okay it is very good at, at ranging because of the strong or similar growth rates they both share and then another pair is the AUD, NZD, Australian dollar and the New Zealand dollar because they also share same similar growth rates so conclusion whether you're trading this a pair that is in a trending or ranging market you should take comfort in knowing that you can profit whatever the case may be find out how you can pick tops and bottoms in both ranging and trending market environments by knowing what a trending environment and a range bound environment are, you are able to employ a specific trading strategy for each. And as the old wise man in Central Park says, only a fool dips his cookies in habanero salsa. Next, trend retracement or reversals. So imagine this scenario because we are now talking about trend retracement or reversal. The price starts to rise and it keeps rising and then it starts to fall and keep falling and then it starts going back up again right have you been in this situation before of course you should have been in that kind of situation before or if you have not you know try and experience how it feels price starts to go up and it's come down and it goes up and it's come down and it goes up a little bit come down some more of it to calm down some okay this all happened so it looks like 
price is actually trying to rally up from this chart we're looking at here right if you uh bought at this level here okay you might have agreed that you no know, price will go back up and if you look at the next image price did went back up a little boy continue to fall back down came back up again continue to fall back down okay so all of this scenario these two scenario we have just looked at they happen on live market okay so what you've seen both is that you might have experienced you know a smooth retracement or a total trend reversal now in the above example right the trader bought and he he didn't recognize the difference between a retracement and the reversal some people you know they get into the market they say okay price is going up okay i'm going to buy and they bought the moment they bought price went up a little and came back down to their entry and went out of their entry okay and they are now in, in loss but it's say, well i bought and what happened they closed the trade here and sell the moment they sell price continues to go up right up and they're like oh my goodness it's going up again okay let me buy and they buy here and what happened once they buy price goes up a little bit and continue to come down they are now in loss again again and price go deep down the moment they close price come back up <laughs> this is called the cycle of vets okay there's difference between a trade reversal and trend trend uh, retracement okay so let's now go down what is the difference between trend retracement and trend reversal now a retracement is defined as a temporary price movement against the established trend that's a trend retracement okay so this is a trend to the top side so we have so here we have the trend and then uh, here we have the trend line okay the market is trending to the top side and then we have trend up and uh, sorry this is big enough mm. okay we're good so we have up and this is the retracement have up this is the retracement okay we have up again and here is the retracement and we'll have up again okay and here is the retracement so this is the ups up up trend and these are the retracement we have with this chart description we are looking at right now i hope you understand retracement okay it's still in the same direction but temporarily the price will come down it will go up in the same direction but temporarily price will come down before going up again okay i hope that's simple and clear for you to understand if you don't understand try and come back and listen to this again now with reversals is quite different okay reversals are defined as a change in the overall trend of price a total change in the overall trend of price now when an uptrend switches to a downtrend a reversal occurs when a downtrend switches to an uptrend a reversal also occurs so using the same example above here's how a reversal looks like we have our uptrend and see what price did price got to this high here okay and came to this high here it failed to create a new high you see look at this high this one is higher than this one this high is higher than this high this high is higher than this high so when price came back down here to this level here it should have created a new high that will be higher than this previous high but it failed to create a new high and the high you know stored in the same previous high here so we call this double top so price stored here and what happened we see price falling back down breaking all these levels in the market in this scenario in this case the market is reversing because in an uptrend it should continue to go up okay so the market is reversing and what happened what do we see prices continue to slump back down some more okay and now we have the retracement 
lower high a new lower low 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 and lower high so this low this this low here is is uh, lower than this one this low here is lower than this this low here is lower than this this low here is lower than this okay so this is a total change in direction of the market okay so this is the difference between price retracement and price reversal okay it takes a total change in direction so what should you do when faced with possible retracement or reversal you have three options one if in a position you could hold onto your position this could lead to losses if the retracement turns out to be a longer term reversal you could close the position and re-enter if the price starts moving with the overall trend again of course there could be a missed trade opportunity if prices sharply moves in one direction money is also wasted on spreads if you decide to re-enter point three is you could close permanently this could result in a loss if price went against you or a huge profit if you closed at the top or bottom depending on the structure of your trade and what happens after because reversals can happen at any time choosing the best option isn't always easy this is why using trailing stop loss points can be a great risk management technique when trading with a trend you can employ it to protect your profit and make sure that you always walk away with some pips in the event that a long-term reversal happens i hope you understand this now let's move to identify trend reversal how to identify trend reversals how to identify reversals properly distinguishing between retracement and reversals can reduce the number of losing trades and even set you up with some winning trades that being said it is important for us to know the difference between retracement or a reversal and how to classify them properly okay so here they are retracements retracement usually occurs after a huge directional price movement okay and it is short term or short lived reversal the fundamentals that is the macro economic or environment they do not change nothing to change about fundamentals okay news and all that if it's in an uptrend buying interest is present the buyers are still in the market making it likely for price to rally up if it's in a downtrend selling interest is present that is the sellers are in the market actively in the market and they are more powerful than the buyers and it makes uh, prices to continue to fall down more likely however in a reversal reversal can occur at any time okay and unlike short term for retracements reversals are long term price movement and for the fundamentals unlike in retracement which nothing change when it's a reversal fundamentals do change and in fact fundamentals are the catalyst for long term reversal and if it's in an uptrend there is a very very little buying interest forcing price to fall lower and if it's a downtrend there is very little selling interest falling, forcing price to rise further so how to identify retracement now method one is using fibonacci retracement levels now fibonacci retracement levels they are not perfect so what do we mean from the chart we're looking at this is a price movement okay in this example on the chart we're looking at right now we see price move sharply to the top side so here's our retracement remember we're using the fibonacci retracement levels okay so we draw our fib from this low to this high and we have our fib levels okay so for retracement price will usually retrace to 382 the 50 percent retracement level or maximumly the 6.0.618 levels okay these are the strong levels if price force or breaks this level you no know, it is very very likely 90 percent likely that price is not trying to reverse to the downside okay however if price doesn't break 
these levels and holds in this level here like we are seeing here there's more chances that price will continue in the direction it is going which is up and price did rally to the top side okay now once there's a new high because this is a previous high and this is a new high what you have to do again is from this low draw your feet from this low to this high here and you have out your levels okay and see price broke the 382 price broke try to break the 50 percent but it could not and it found you know support here and on this level and what do we see price rallied up so nothing is certain when it comes to the forex market earlier this retracement from here okay stalled at 618 before it moved to the top side and now this new move stalled at 50 percent before continuing to the top side again and so what do we see from this what do we what do, what do we deduce what can we deduce from this movement of this price action that price of the market we do what it has to do you can't just say oh it's going to stall at 382 or at 50 percent or at 618 you are not certain however you can try to find odds with you know bullish candles like this okay weeks like this when you use this okay in combination with a uh, technical candles closure which you have learned the odds will be in your favor my friends so moving ahead to the next uh, method pivot point you recall we learned about pivot point now what most traders will do is they will call up pivot points and put them on the chart to them on the chart and wait for price to do one of two things if it is an uptrend traders will look at the lower low points support one support two and support three okay and now if price should break support two and break support three to the downside so let's say we have support one two and three and price is coming it breaks support one it breaks support two and it breaks support three okay no this is no longer a retracement but rather a reversal price will just come and continue down the trend has changed okay but if it doesn't break support one or two and it found strength you know support here right like this no we are continuing in the uptrend this is just a reversal new high previous high a new high okay and then if it's in a downtrend first should have to look at the higher high resistance point and wait for it to break okay so so we have one two three right if it's in a downtrend okay so they will wait for the pullback okay retracement if it breaks one i mean if it breaks three this is two and this is one if it breaks three right and found support i mean you know reject a very huge pain by reject this level and continue to go up no it is no longer retracing but rather the trend has changed to the top side but if in a downtrend price is coming and found you know retrace to this side and found you know resistance here in this level and continue to come down just know it is only a pullback this is the this is the new high this is the previous high okay off of the back of a down trend so it's a retracement know the difference my friends please try and know the difference let's look at this chart okay so all we have been explaining is the same thing here see what happened uh, this is an uptrend price came and found support in s1 and what do we see this huge bullish candle to the top side okay and if this price okay because you see it's now stalling here if price should break this support one right two just no and ultimately breaks three no the trend has changed okay to the downside it's simple as that so that is how we are going to use the pivot point to determine reversals and retracement next is trend line let's just explain from here without reading 
okay so once you're in a downtrend draw your trend lines on the highs and the previous high and what do we see see price create a lower high lower low lower high lower low lower high lower high and we'll have a new lower low lower high a new lower low and we'll have a lower high and what happened price came down fit to create a new lower low went up consolidated in this area and what do we see price broke above this range okay in this case the reversal has begun because price has broken above this trend line and so what do we see price went back up you know to the reverse side so that's how to use trend lines to determine trend reversal or um, or retracement okay so these are the retracements again let's just do this one more time no oh my goodness i don't like looking for these tools okay so this is a retracement to the lower side retracement 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 but now this is a change in direction price came back up and pulled boom price went to the skyrocketed to the top side so that's that with trend lines that's how to use trend lines and trend line is most of the favorite that forex traders use so why these methods can identify reversals they aren't the only way and at the end of the day nothing can substitute for practice and experience practice and experience nothing can substitute for that so with enough screen time you can find a method that suits your forex trading personality in identifying retracements and reversals next lesson protect yourself from re from reversals so let's discuss how we can protect ourselves from reversal to protect yourself from reversals and retracements i mean from reversals rather because re retracement you can stand the trades even if it's reversed so to protect yourself from reversals i'm not going to talk about the story of pink rubber or whatever i'm just going to go straight to the most important point to protect herself from reversals, know how to distinguish between retracements and reversals. This is part of growing up as a trader. Having the ability to do so will effectively reduce your losses and prevent winners from turning into losers. With lots of practice and experience, you will find yourself being able to trade accordingly to retracement and exceed with a profit more times than not. So, we are also encouraged to do further reading on this topic and these forums. How do I know if a trend is losing strength? Which indicator or for gauging the strength of an indicator? Best indicator for gauging the strength of any current trend? Then trend channels and price actions. Okay, these trades, forum trades can help you a lot. Okay, so I'm going to put a link in the description also, linking to this uh, forum trace on how to know it. So, bravo, congratulations. Also, uh, try to use stop losses as well. It's very, very important. Always make stop losses. Put stop losses in whenever you take a trade. And that's how we'll come to the end of grade 10. Congratulations. And next, we'll be considering uh, grade 11 before we go to 12. So, if you like this video, please make sure you turn on notifications, smash the like button, subscribe if you haven't and until next time, take care.